Yo, 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 it's Drew at Indigo. I just wanted to talk about my project. Um, I've had a weird couple of days, man. Stomach issues have been wild. But anyway, um, if y'all listen to it, I really appreciate you. Like, that means so much to me. Uh, letting out all those traumatic experiences really w was a lot for me to do. Um, but I appreciate everybody that was a part of it. Thursday, Jive, Dismiss Fit. Um, I work with a producer named uh, Plantchum. He's a good YouTube producer on the song, Yes, and had a great time making that song. Um, but to kind of deep dive into into it a little bit, like, I feel something deals with me almost dying back in 2017. And I plan to do an interview uh, here soon with, with a, the Vibes podcast to really get y'all more hip to, to what happened when I almost died and everything. But uh, long story short, I went to a party. Uh, I was trying to escape depression, anxiety, super suicidal. Grandfather, I just died. There's tons of bad stuff happening. And I don't know. I, I was lost, man. I, I, I was trying to find a reason to stay alive. I was trying to find a reason to survive in this world because, like, I didn't have one. I was just like, everybody's dying. Life sucks. And all my health issues were still prevalent back then. They were just my lungs instead of my stomach. You know, I was in and out the hospital, couldn't couldn't breathe and shit. Airways was all closed. Lungs was barely, co almost collapsing and shit. Like, it was fucked up. But, um, yeah, I almost died. I, I was smoking some weed and taking some acid, you know, trying to have a little trippy time. But uh, the, the weed was laced with bath salts and the uh, acid was laced with PCP. And uh, the weed was not, actually not even real weed. It was actually uh, a synthetic government version called K2. So, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it fucked me up. It really did. And, um, you know, I was outside of my outside of my body. Felt like I felt like I literally died. Like I was like going to the other side and shit. And, uh, you know, I it felt like I was conversing with some like interdimensional spirits they were like light light orbs with wings is the best way i can explain it and they carried me up this stairway and i heard this sound that sounded like a mixture of like brass trumpets horn horn instruments mixed with like rushing waves of water and um it, it just felt like it was it was whispering along with that huge impactful sound the word second chance and i just like shot back to my body and i knew that i was supposed to be here and um, e even before all of that happened, you know, like, it was crazy because, like, when I was outside of space, time, and matter, it was like, whatever these beings were, they were showing me scenes of my life because I was beyond time. And they were like, hey, you can go back to these scenes. But now that I'm living life now here in the present, it's like a constant deja vu because I'm seeing those scenes relived. And it's just crazy because I, in those scenes, I joined the Vibes group. And, and I started doing, taking music seriously and stuff took off and it's crazy. So I'm looking forward to see how that uh, plays out because it, it's not like I know everything, everything that's going to happen in the future, but it's like when stuff happens, it's like, oh yeah, this happened. And it's just like overly enhanced. It's wild. It's crazy. But uh, on to the next song, uh, God. Um, I grew up in a very religious household and my my mother you know passed down from my from my grandparents were uh, heavily christian like fu like fundamentalist charismatic very like you know holy ghost like bible take everything literally like super hardcore and i've always been a huge skeptic so i like went deep into understanding the scriptures i bought um i joined an internship at a church uh, and I got some money and I bought like these Greek and Hebrew coin Greek Bibles. Um, and I tried to understand the meaning of like the world and like the, to the scriptures. And I really wanted to understand what, what was the truth. I really wanted to under, I really, really wanted to meet God. I really wanted to know what that was. And the church was just a big scam. And I, when I joined that internship, I realized how the church operates from within and it's just a big scam, bro. And I will never conform to a religious control system ever again in my life. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud druid, druid indigo, you know, I praise Awen, that's just inspiration, it's just the flowing life force of nature, bro, I praise Awen, I don't fuck with no religions no more, um, but then, uh, the song Leeches, that was a really, really deep song for me, it took a lot for me to make that song, and, uh, and to let y'all peer into that, but, uh, you know, I had a I had a toxic relationship with, with a girl when I was 17. Uh, she was 15. And, uh, you know, we loved each other, you know, at, you know, in the early parts of the relationship. And but we were both really traumatized by our, our upbringings, especially her. I mean, I mean, the song may, makes it come off as if like she's this terrible person. But like, really, like what I'm trying to convey in the song is that we were actually good, innocent kids that got fucked up and then did terrible things and like made stupid mistakes because of the environment that we were in, which is why I, I quote that line, which my stepdad always says, which is we are products of our environment, because at the end of the day, like your true potential and who you are is, is one thing and your soul is one thing, but how your flesh and your physical, uh, how your physical nature adapts to the situation that you're in is a whole nother thing. So that song was, was a lot. And uh, I'm not going to get into specifics about, you know, the toxicity. Just listen to the song and you'll really, you'll, you'll really, you'll, you'll understand. It's a, it's a dark song. Um, but um, all her siblings and, and her family, I still have love for y'all. And, uh, you know, if any of them happen to listen to the song, it's no ill, it's no ill towards y'all. Like, I love y'all. And I hope everybody succeeds. I hope everybody grows because, you know, the pain that I've gone through, the pain that y'all gone through is wild. And the fact that we all made it out alive and, and you know, I almost died. She almost died. Like, it's crazy how just trauma can just fuck us up, man. But uh, next song is uh, Dad. And this was, a, this was probably the hardest song for me to make because... I love my dad. Uh, I love my stepdad. And, uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of, a lot of shit. Um, a lot of shit. Um, but my dad, you know, a lot of questionable decision making as far as parenting goes. He wasn't around a lot. And um, that really affected me from a, from a young age because I, I just needed that guidance. I needed a father figure to to really just show me how to grow up, especially as, as a mixed person. I, mean, I know y'all see the fro. Uh, I mean, I'm light-skinned as hell, but I'll touch on that on the next song. But uh, as a mixed kid in Preble County, uh, everybody was just super judgmental, super stereotypical. Like, they were like, oh, niggers do this, da, 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 you know, excuse my language. But, like, it's, it's really, like, people would come up to me, like, kids would come to me at school and be like, you know, you're this and you're you're the N-word, and da, 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 da. And it fucked me up like and teachers would be like oh your dad doesn't matter because he's a minority and the where i grew up sucks if you were black mixed mexican whatever it sucked um but anyway as far as like like dads dads um the dad song you know i i am an intellectual person but i but i'm a very sensitive person emotionally but i probably come off as very like standoffish and like uh, I don't know, like a rock, like I, I'm, I'm probably very like everything has to be logical, but deep inside, like I'm, I'm actually a very sensitive, emotional person. Like I listen to Bjork and like cry because like Bjork is probably the most talented artist ever, and her music is just so emotional, and I just relate and feel and connect to things even if I haven't gone through those experiences. Like it's, it's really wild. But uh, not having a dad that was consistently there, and not having a strong male role model made it really hard for me to identify with my masculine side. Um, even though I tried to put on this face of I'm a rock, you can't hurt me. I have no weaknesses. You know, we all kind of do that as men. Um, but it, it's hard to step into that masculinity when, you know, you didn't have a good figure to look up to, to, to really grow in that masculinity. Um, but yeah, uh, products of our environment, man, we, we are all just, people that have had to adapt to the situations that we were in and learn how to survive. Um, uh, but yeah, the song about uh, Tales from a Light-Skinned Snow Monkey. You know, that's a crazy song title. Um, but, you know, I'm out here, light-skinned nigga from the sticks. 
And um, like I said earlier, it's it's hard to grow up in a community where everybody's, you know, mostly white. And I'm talking like not even Mediterranean white, like straight up from England, Ireland, you know, Norway, Scandinavia, uh, as uh, as as uh, that one dude said, they're from the Caucasus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, um, just white people are, are, are cool, bro. Like, 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 I love my white people, you know, I love my black people, but like, racism is wild bro racism is wild and i've had some issues in my family where like you know my mom married a black man and my grandfather didn't approve and it made me feel weird because it's like do you not accept me as a human being um and then it's just it's just fucked up because i never felt accepted by white people and then as i've grown older i've stepped more into you know black black crowds and black communities and it's like i'm still like that light-skinned nigga like i'm not like, like they don't see me as 100% them. And it's just wild because white people have always seen me as you're black. You know, you're this, you're that. And it's always derogatory. Like, you're this person. You're not you're not up to par with us. You know what I'm saying? So it's like not being accepted by black people. It was like, damn, don't nobody really accept me. Don't nobody accept me, bro. Like, I'm here alone, you know. And that was just tough. It was it was tough. And then when, when people make you know, little racist jokes in here and there. Like, I love a racist joke here and there. Like, I try to be open-minded and funny and stuff, but it hurts, bro, sometimes. Like, it, it, it really pulls down deep into your into your heartstrings, bro, because, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, white people, you know, don't don't reach out their hand for me, or black people, it's the same deal. Like, like you know, it's just me and all these other mixed niggas, but, you know, we it's hard for us to even feel like we have a unity because we all got different shades of skin. We all got different features, you know, some of us are dark skin mixed niggas. Some of us are light skin mixed niggas like me. And, you know, it's just crazy. And then all, of course, you got the stereotypical shit like the Drakes and Steph Curry's and shit. And everybody's trying to throw you into that box and, oh, I'm sitting next to Steph Curry, uh, you know, and whatever, bro. But anyway, uh, next song was a uh, yes. And uh, I know I'm going like this. <laughs> I'm nervous. y'all. I have a lot of anxiety, bro, especially with all this like stomach pain I go through. But the song Yes is like, everybody, I feel like tons of people don't realize what I'm going through. And it's probably partly my fault because I don't vocalize it. I don't, I don't, I don't express it that, that well because I'm just going through it and I'm trying to remain strong. But every single day, I deal with so much pain. I deal with so much anxiety mentally, emotionally, physically. Like, I just, I'm fucked up. And my stomach won't let me eat anything really like i like i've been eating for like two years i've been eating rice and mung dal which is like a split mung bean from like india like i'll be eating like a monk <laughs> out here so uh rice beans you know spinach apples and bananas are like my, my my main diet i can't eat shit no, no meat no no gluten no wheat no dairy none of that um so I, i'm just messed up internally in my body and then of course my traumatic upbringing has, has probably caused and affected that and made it worse um so i'm just super fucked up so the song yes was just me kind of being like you know all these outside people looking at me they don't understand me so they're like are you even trying bro like are you just lazy like are you not trying to like like yes i'm trying yes like yes dot 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 like yes yes <laughs> yes like i am trying probably more than you will ever know i'm trying so hard i'm out here starting a music business uh, i've got songs with with people from cali i've got songs with with uh some great engineers i've got songs with with some of the great great dayton artists you know thrizzy jive uh aki you know, you know and i'm rolling with a, a a really nice crowd and like i surrounded myself with the right people and I've thrown, I've thrown retreats with them and like, I don't know, I've just been going really hard despite what I've been going through and I'm proud of myself and that song was like a yes, I'm trying, I know you guys might not see it, but I see it and I'm proud of myself. Um, And then I threw another uh mix of um the song I Feel Something at the end. Uh, that was the mix that was actually recorded at the Vibes Retreat uh, that was done, that was done in July uh, this year. And um, I wanted to have both mixes on there just because that mix was the original take. That was the original mix. That was the original 
uh, version of that song with the original samples, uh, the heartbeat sounds in the background, and, and like that was the original sound. So I just wanted to keep that on the project just to remember what it sounded like at the retreat because that just meant so much to me. Um, you know, Jive, Jive Mahomey, Jive was like, I just want to challenge you to write a song about stuff that you went through. And um, Threezy came in and laid down the hook and uh, this Misfit produced the beat. And uh, I just came in there and I wrote a little like poem about how I almost died in 2017. So um, yeah, all, all in all, um, this project was a lot for me to, to make and to put out for y'all. Um, but it's something I needed to do uh, for myself. And it's something that I've always wanted to do to, to get y'all to like really see who I am because I'd be so scared of like presenting myself for some reason. Like I'm Druid Indigo. I'm a trippy wizard. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm anxiety filled. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm suicidal, but I'd be fighting all that. I'd be fighting those intrusive thoughts, all, all, all the pain. I'd be fighting it. But every day is a struggle for me. And, um, at the end of the day, I just want to be a light for people. I want to be a light for y'all. And, 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 and I want to, I want to help, help everybody that listens to my music and then I'm around grow and evolve as, as human beings, because I, I feel like we are, we are spirits. You know what I'm saying? We are souls that are, that are in this physical flesh to, to learn something. We are here to, to, to learn from our experiences in, in, in this realm, in this particular uh, moment in space, time and matter. And as a person who has left space, time and matter, and, and this is no bullshit. I'm not lying to y'all. This is real. Like I left space, time and matter. And this is on no religious shit. Like I don't really fuck with a lot of religions, control system. I don't fuck with none of that. But is there a creator? I don't know. Is there, is there something beyond me? Yes. Is there some kind of higher realm with beings and things that I can't explain as a finite human being trying to contemplate and explain infinity there is something there and as a person who has been put in a place where i'm outside of this material realm like there's something out there and there's something for us to learn while we're here and whether that's just love <laughs> um in, in the simplest terms but there's something that we have to do here we, we have to we have to do an action we have to we have to express the, the innate purpose within while we're here and learn from our mistakes here. Um, but the, 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 uh, the theme of this project is we are products of our environments and, and shout out to my stepdad, um, for, for teaching me that, that quote. Um, and, and another theme is like, I, for, I, I was forgiving my dad. I was forgiving, uh, my, my, uh, ex in my last relationship i was forgiving the people that had hurt me um i don't forget which makes it hard because the pain is there but i'm forgiving i'm letting that go i'm releasing that energy and i'm letting all you guys know whether you've hurt me or not i love you because that that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to love unconditionally and and grow um but uh i'll always be posting the number 618 so i don't know if y'all are hip to that but um what when i almost died um, I seen these numbers, 618, just kind of blinking everywhere. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just know that that's important to me. And whenever I have like synchronicities or like premonitions into the future or I like have those deja vu moments, you know, I'll just see 618 and it's the randomest places or somebody be like, what time is it? And it's like, it's six, it's 618. It just happened so many times. Like, like I, I used to be like, man, fuck that number. That's just a coincidence. I'm not trying to be one of those crazy numerology people and all of that. But it just kept happening. So eventually I was just like, all right, that's my number then. You know, Trippy Red's out here. Big 14. Well, it's, it's big 618 in this bitch. Um, but yeah, I love all of y'all homies. Uh, I love all y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all if y'all listen to the EP. If you haven't yet, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link that below. So uh, check that out. Uh, if you want to get to know me a little bit more, I know I don't show myself a lot and make videos, but that's about to change. I'm about to be a lot more active um, on social media, about to be a lot more active in general because I need to start going even harder um, and, and really conquer my health issues, my pain, my anxiety with y'all and, and help y'all do that as well. And, and if any of y'all have pain, y'all y'all have gone through traumatic experiences and y'all need to y'all need to trauma dump, y'all need to. I need to let loose. Y'all need y'all need to 
have somebody help you and relate to you and 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 help you pivot through what you're going through hit me up hit me up you know what i'm saying i'm i'm here for y'all my my goal in life is to make y'all's lives better so that y'all can grow and y'all can evolve and so i can grow and get better as a person as well on top of that so uh yeah this is a message from druid indigo uh 618 praises to alwyn peace out